Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Today we're gonna give you a full guide and a step-by-step -step process on how to properly update Divi. So let's get started and show you how to do this. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can always click on the link in the description and come over here to the blog post. And as a reminder, we do a tutorial every single Tuesday here on YouTube and on the blog. So if you're interested in that, you can be subscribed. Now, in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to properly update Divi. Now, you could just go click on the update button when you see that notification appear. Um, but clicking update is not just a way to get rid of that notification. It's a, it's a very important step and it needs to be treated in such a way where you place a high importance to it knowing that if you don't, if you get careless, it could cause a lot of problems. I mean, think about it. If you update and there are problems with your site, it could lead to uh, loss of sales if you're selling something or if you you need customers or whatever it is, they're gonna look at your site and say, there's all kind of problems. I don't trust this person. I'm not gonna buy from them. I'm not gonna contact them for services. All of those kinds of things. So you really need to take this seriously. And so I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps here on how to update Divi properly. Um, the first thing is not really, I guess, a step that you would do every time. It would just be kind of like a one-time thing. But make sure auto updates are turned off. Now, Divi and WordPress do not have this on by default, at, at least at this point. Um, auto updates are off. However, some hosting providers turn them on by default. And this is very concerning. Please go and check right now, go check your websites and check if the auto updates are enabled or not. Now I'm not going to show you, I have a different tutorial here, how to disable auto updates in Divi. So go check that out. I actually have um, the full steps there and even some code snippets to help you with that. And again, this is kind of one of the things you'll do once. You won't really do it every time. But when you see an update for Divi um, the first time, make sure that's all. But then, you know, after you've done this step, you can just kind of skip to step two from then on. So one of the things that I do right away when I hear of a Divi update, whether I maybe I got an, an email from Elegant Themes, like a new feature update, or I was in a website and saw, hey, there's, you know, I got that little notification, that little orange dot there. I'll actually go and check the change log. Now I do this for a couple of things. I wanna make sure I understand, you know, what version number it is, even just the date, like, oh, it was three days ago. How did I miss that? You know, just that kind of thing in general. I wanna get that like general idea of all the information related to the update. And checking the change log is a good way to see that, see what's the latest version. Maybe there was a couple in the last couple of days that you, you didn't really check, you missed those. It's just a good idea to check. Now, I have this full guide here. It's called How to Access and Understand the Divi Change Log. And I have this as a blog post here and I explain a lot of things. There's actually several different ways you can access that, whether with a, with a direct link um, here like this, you can see in the screenshots, or um, it's actually, you know, you could click in your Elegant Themes account or you could use our new tool. And I wanted to point this out because I think it is really cool. This right here is the Divi change log. So it's like a text file. Um, here you can see the version and when it was updated, a list of things and all of this. And that can be kind of overwhelming and confusing. So what I've done is I've modified that and styled it. So if you come here to our website, to our Divi change log page, you can see we're on the latest one. You can see the date and then you can see a list of the changes, right? And you can even click if you wanna check um, an older version like that. So that's a really cool free resource we have there. So yeah, just go and check that, you know, understanding a, like what changed, how will that affect you? You can look down there like, oh, this is irrelevant to me. Or there might be a couple of things you're like, oh yeah, that I'm doing, I'm using that on my site, I better check that or, you know, just being familiar, um, for me, it actually just, it keeps me informed. Like I do, 
a lot of tutorials, like I said, here every week. I sell products. It's critical that I check the change log. And for you, if you have clients or just your own site, it can be just as important. All right, and now another thing is creating a backup. So before you know, you click that update button when you have a new version, I strongly recommend taking a Divi backup. Now, a lot of hosting providers already have like a daily backup and most likely that's you know 30 days and it was SiteGround and, and some other hosting providers will have that. Um, if your hosting provider doesn't have backups, then you need to get a different hosting provider. Uh, but anyway, I do have this guide, how to create a backup of your Divi website. So be sure to check that out. Kind of gives you an introduction to what backups are. You know, what is this? Why would I use it? Why is it so important? When do I take it? You know, that kind of thing. And then it gives you some scenarios of how you can do it with your hosting provider, with a plugin, and even talk about some things in Divi, creating a backup of like your theme builder templates and theme options and stuff like that. So it's kind of um, a nice full overview guide on backups. So that is a step to take when you're updating. Now, let's just throw this in there. Um, I would, this apply for um, backups and staging. I don't think that it's necessarily like a life or death thing if, if it's that last number in the change log. So with Divi, they'll come with three numbers like 4.10.0, right? Now that second number is the most uh, common for like a new feature. So when Divi releases a new feature, um, they'll, they'll change that number. So 4.10, 4.11, 4.12, that number there. And I would do a backup and the next step here, staging um, for those numbers, that second one. Now, if it's 4.10.8, you know, that kind of thing, I, I don't think that it's necessarily critical. However, you should be taking daily backups anyhow. So technically you would still have a backup. I guess what I'm referring to is more as like when you, right before you update, take a manual backup. And that's what I'm saying is, is not critical in that last number. Um, definitely the first two numbers, you should be doing that. And, and like I've been saying with a staging site, you know, a staging site is like a clone of your live site, but it's private and it's, it's separate. It allows you to test an update like this without affecting the live site. So I know that this has been very helpful for me. Like when I update and then realize there's conflicts with the update, there's a conflict with a plugin or with some code that I've had, I can isolate it in the staging site. It's the same environment. Remember, it's the exact same scenario of everything. That allows me to just fully check everything. And it allows me to troubleshoot, do all the normal troubleshooting steps in the staging site. So by the time I'm done there, I'll know exactly what's wrong. I can just go ahead and click, you know, merge to the live or whatever the terminology is for your, um, in your hosting account there with the staging. And it'll take your staging site and move it to live. So it's really nice. I mean, you can, you're basically just, taking a copy of your site and playing around with it, making sure everything's right, and then putting it on live. It's like you're avoiding that risk of doing that on a live site. So I do have a full guide on that. Definitely check that out. I introduce staging sites to you. You know, what are they used for and why is it so important? And there's some really good reasons, trust me. So I talk about that in that other guide. I have videos for all these other guides as well. All right, so here we come to something I find myself saying every day, especially doing you know tech support for my products, clear your cache. So a website uses cache to store files locally on your computer. It actually helps things load faster because it's, it's storing some of the files locally on your browser or on different um, content delivery networks around the world. It just gets the content closer and removes that uh, redundancy of needing to load it again and again and again. However, having that cache, it's a good thing. Trust me, it's a good thing. But when you're developing your site, when you're making changes to your site, and when you're updating your site, like plugins and themes, 
it can get kind of stuck and mixed up. So you need to clear it, kind of like just reset it, like purge it out and let it let it build up again with the new update. This is, I would say, the number one quote problem with Divi, with with any website and with any software. But it's also the number one solution. And it's the it's the number one easiest solution. Clear your cache. I do have a, a full guide on that as well. And and I'm just gonna say this is not my recommendation. This is a requirement. This is just something you do. It's standard. If you're a web designer, it doesn't matter. You clear your cache. That's just what you do when you update. Um, I'm, here's everything about clearing your cache in, in this full guide, how to do it in your browser, caching plugins, in Divi especially, there's a button called static CSS file generator. You need to clear that. I'm gonna talk about all that in that um, tutorial and video, so go check that out. But again, it's not an option, it's just something that you have to do. <laughs> And it's gonna solve your problem a lot of the times. It, it won't always, but it will a lot of the times. Um, and it's gonna save you. I, I'm just saying, you look in like the Facebook forums, you know, in the groups, and how many things you know people post. You know, this happened and this broke and this and that. And it's like, well, did you clear a cache? Oh, that solved it. You know, it's like just do that first and then ask for help. Um, and especially with me, you know, doing having our products that we have for sale. You know, on all of our plugin documentation pages, I have that as a step. You know, install the plugin and then it's like, as another step, clear your cache because it's so important. Um, another thing that is kind of like an option, it's not really like a step in updating Divi, but it, I mean, it kind of is, but I wasn't sure if I should call it a step. But, you know, if you follow these steps and you find yourself with issues on the live site, and it's maybe whatever the reason, maybe you were lazy and, and didn't follow some of the steps. Whatever the reason, there's there's problems on the live site. And you're not sure what to do. You could, you know, just like go back, find an old version of Divi that you had saved and install that. But Divi has a rollback feature. And again, I have a link to a full guide here. And it allows you to kind of like undo the update. It's like an undo button, really. Um, so here you can see the screenshot, how it's in Divi there. You just click the button and it'll walk you through rolling back to the previous version. And, you know, it may seem like maybe that's an easy thing to do, maybe a quick step, but it really is just um, delaying the issue. It's going around the issue. It's not solving the issue. So I recommend considering whether you should roll back before you roll back um, there's some things here like how bad's the issue, what troubleshooting steps have you taken, and you know if you're finding that it's going to take a little bit of time to troubleshoot, you should probably just roll back. What you should do in that case is click the roll back button and roll back to the previous installed version, which most likely does not have any bugs, and then um, take the site and move it to staging, and then check troubleshoot those bugs there. And um, that's kind of the solution. So that's kind of a step, but maybe not. But I hope you guys, you know, see all of these things as important. Um, you know, rolling back, clearing your cache, staging, backups, even the change log. You know, they are important. I'm not just giving. I'm not just doing this to create a video or something like. I'm I'm doing this because. I have seen so many people struggle with problems after they update, and honestly, it's not really Divi's fault. None of this has anything really to do with just Divi. It, um, this is just standard procedure, and especially if you are you know, doing this for clients, creating websites and stuff, you need to be doing these steps. That's just how it is. So if you found any of these steps useful and helpful, give me a thumbs up. That really helps me. Um, you know, with the whole algorithm thing there on YouTube. Um, but yeah, just let me know in the comments if you are enjoying our tutorials here. We do this every week. Um, usually it's something related to like a code snippet, a nice little trick we do with customizing code and modules and things like that in Divi. Uh, we have hundreds of tutorials here, so be sure you're subscribed and follow along. That's what you'll get. All right, well, good luck with all of your updates. I hope everything 
does go well with you when you when Divi releases these um, updates. Um, it will if you follow these steps. All right, well, we'll see you all in our next video.